Hello, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Leah and I make book content, independent bookstore support content, general ramblings about my own personal life. So I have returned to Yorkshire because at the moment nothing is really keeping me in Manchester. Um, temporarily. I phrase that as if I've just run away from all my problems, when everyone knows if I was going to run away from all my problems, I would be in Seattle right now. Because in my head, when something goes majorly wrong, that's where I need to be. Have I been? Not since I was four. So why do I have this hypothesis? Couldn't tell you. I thought while I was at home, it might be fun to have a little peruse, a little snoop around what baby Leah used to get up to. Full disclosure, I say childhood bedroom. I My family moved into this house when I was like 16. So this isn't like my Tracy Beaker, Little Mermaid, encyclopedias on cats collection. The general vibe is basically teenage Leah. Post puberty, but still not really sure of herself, Leah is encapsulated in what we've got going on. There are two, but I'm little and I didn't want to balance another cardboard box, so we will get to those in a way. I'm not sure how. What have we got in the surrounding areas? Um, we've got a K-pop poster, because not even that long ago, your girl was a weeb, okay? That's gonna be blanket statement. Everything you're about to see is me in my pop punk band phase, me in my anime phase, me in my K-pop phase. That's basically everything that's going on here. <laughs> okay, so, as I say, two shelves, drilled into the wall, got them from B&M or something like that. My whole room is pink and white, so with this being a white wall, I have pink shelves. Behind you is a pink wall, I have a single white shelf. This shelf in reality doesn't even have that many books, funnily enough, all the books are up there. What I do have is general crap though, and who doesn't want to root around people's general crap? So we do have some books, these are books that I've taken from my uncle's house and I need to take back to Manchester at some point. Probably not going to do that because in the couple of weeks while I've been at home, I have visited independent bookstores, aka the only place where I'm currently permitted to buy books, and I've bought books, so um... Don't know when these are gonna make it back to Manchester, not anytime soon. Okay, then I also, underneath here, have DVDs. They include Pushing Daisies, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. If you've never seen Pushing Daisies, it once got described as Disney for adults. Um, I made all of my friends watch it when we were 18. We all started to come up with how the show should have ended, because it got canceled. Oh, I just really fancied uh, Lee Pace and Ned the Pie Maker specifically because I've seen him since when he played the dad. Was he even the dad? Yes. In um, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever. He's not as good looking now. That's fine. We also have some anime. Of course we do. Three anime DVDs here. Um, one is from Love Live, which was like a singing show that I freaking loved. And then the other show is Gekan Shoujo no Zaki-kun, which honestly, I think even if you don't watch anime, if you don't care about anime, I think it's really just funny anyway. This kind of takes a lot of stereotypical tropes, flips them on their head a little bit, which I find very funny. And it only got one series, which is crazy. We've got a bunch of these Disney princesses that you got from Kinder Eggs. Can you see it? I haven't got autofocus on, so that's not gonna help. Blurry. So you were able to get, there are seven of them from Kinder Eggs. I made my whole family buy Kinder Eggs for, I think in reality we got them all over like three days, but the amount of chocolate I must have consumed in that time, geez Louise. And because of that, never getting rid of them. They're so cute. I've got this little key ring, which is Sailor Moon themed, and this along with Mudkip used to hang from my car back when I had a car here, because if you live in a place where a bus only runs once an hour and costs you £10 for a single, you learn to drive pretty quickly. Mudkip was my first ever starter Pokemon on Emerald. I love the little baby, and they will always be my favourite. Okay, and then up here is books. Um, I'm going to talk through and I'll probably overlay some footage that I pre-record. So, on here we have Scott Pilgrim vs The World, the graphic novels awesome. I bought all six and took them on holiday with me. Graphic novels take like no time to read, so obviously I finished those in like two days, but they were so much fun. Uh, Scott Pilgrim is one of my favourite movies of all time. It's one of those lovely like comfort things, so never gonna get rid of those. Glad I've still got those from when I was younger. 
a little uh, Gerard Way in his Danger Days outfit. Uh, it was like a cardboard thing you got in Kerrang! magazine because I used to subscribe to Kerrang! magazine because I was really into pop punk and punk music and trying to be a cool little kid. Um, so he hangs out, never getting rid of him. We've got some more anime figures. These ones are from Cardcaptor Sakura. We've got a little Statue of Liberty. We also have one of the awards. So, how nerd... Everyone says, oh, I was a bit of a nerd when I'm growing up. How nerdy were you, kids? Back in 2017 to 2018, I, a white girl, was elected as chair of the K-pop society at my university. Yep, there's a lot of issues with it, but honestly, my biggest thing was reforming it because the whole thing was run so poorly in the first year by white people that um, they were this close to disbanding. So me and some of my friends, two of whom were actually of Asian descent and therefore uh, could offer guidance on anything that they wanted to deem a cultural activity. Trust me, I didn't touch that with a barge pole. Um, and we won Most Improved Society, and that will probably be my greatest achievement. People recognised my love of socialising and being nice to everyone, with my need for organisation and routine, and yeah, to be honest, I will grow up, I will have a family, I will do great things in my life. This will never get thrown out because it will still be my greatest achievement. I have a degree in this household somewhere. <laughs> Now we get on to the shit you really care about, the books. What sort of stuff did Leah read when she was a kid? Again, 16 to 19. So obviously every prick and their aunt had a John Green book or two on their shelves. If you were my age back in bloody 2010 onwards. How old was I in 2010? How old am I now? 13. So if you were like, 15 around 2012 then you definitely owned John Green books up here I have all of them apart from Abundance of Catherine's and Paper Town so in reality I have three of them uh, because those ones sucked but this one was my favorite this one I thought was so good and I don't think people like it very much but oh my god I loved it so much the dual um, character storyline where each author wrote the different will. I thought it was so clever at the time. I th just thought it was great. And David Leatherton um, writing one of the wills being gay with uh, John Green writing the other one being straight. Just, it dealt with a lot, you know? It, it allowed a di actually diverse characters. Not that John Green has the tendency to write a lot of very similar um, characters, or did. I haven't read Turtles all the way down, I hear it's very good, but he did get a bit of a reputation for making some strange manic pixie dream girl, oh no wait, don't do that, storyline. So it was cool to have um, another author intercepting that a little bit. We've got The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. I have the trilogy up here. Everyone knows Jenny Han from um, To All The Boys I Loved before, or something like that. Um, the Netflix thing that was also a book, I haven't seen it, I haven't read it. All I knew of Jenny Han was The Summer I Turned Pretty. Uh, I must, I mean, I don't know how well it comes across. I have read this book so many times. Oh my goodness, I used to just devour it. It was so... It's not dumb, it was fun to read and I don't regret a second of it. Um, one girl, two boys, and the summer that changed everything. So this one is about um, Isabel, Belly, who, um, yeah, they return to this summer house every summer, and this year, the boys realise she's grown up. She's a, she's not just like a, a, a flat-chested little tyke that is here to, oh, ruin your day, I don't want to play with girls. Now they're like, wait, she's fit and she has a personality and stuff. So she's always been in love with one brother, the other brother has always been in love with her, and the series just kind of follows them down. The end of this book and then the start of the second book were devastating for little 15 year old me. The way that it all went down, I was just so sad. Yeah, it, it was just everything that you wanted to happen to you when you were 15 going on holiday with your family. So, can confirm, never happened, it's fine, hasn't made me bitter at all. 
No, these were so much fun. Never gonna get, never gonna get rid of them. My kids are gonna read them and be like, uh, that's lame, what a beach is. The world's flooded, mom. Uh, we also have Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. This was in this book, um, the main character is attacked, she's raped, and it follows her life after it comes out that she was attacked. It's set in a small Irish town. It's about how her family reacts to her, how her friends react to her, how the, the community she lives in reacts to her, and this um, attitude of don't accuse him, you're going to ruin his life, when in reality, I mean, it's not having a great impact on her, is it? Yeah, this was so sad. And the ending of this, it's one of those, it's very real. It's a very real ending um, to the book. It's the most realistic ending I could have ever imagined. And it's also just gut-wrenching. Um, so I really would encourage people to read this. I don't know, it's this, is it YA? Probably not. But um, I think people should read it just to like, you know, if you have those friends that still have the mindset of like, oh, well, she, she, she was asking for it. Um, maybe they could have a peruse through this, but it was, it was hard. And it's one of those, um, you know, that a whole line about how like everyone knows at least one person who's been through that. Um, and you kind of, yeah, I don't know, massive trigger warnings on this but it was a, um, a very well done book, is what I'll say. And to end on a slightly higher energy note, I guess, um, not a positive one, don't get tricked. On this shelf I have In The Miso Soup by Rue Murakami. This is another one I'm gonna give away. If you see this video and you want it, let me know. If not, it's going in a charity shop. I have heard he does a really good book called Coin Locker Babies. This one sucked eggs. I don't get it. Um, okay, so it's meant to be like a murder mystery set in Tokyo, but in the first like 10, 15 pages, you know who did it? But I'll read the blurb, okay. It's just before New Year and Frank, an overweight American tourist, has hired Kenji to take him on a guided tour of Tokyo's nightlife. But Frank's behaviour is so odd that Kenji begins to entertain a horrible suspicion. His client may in fact have murderous desires. Although Kenji is far from innocent himself, he unwillingly descends with Frank into an inferno of evil from which only his 16-year-old girlfriend, Jun, can possibly save him. So you're like, ooh, are you like, you're walking around like, trying to figure out if he's the murderer? Is the murderer like, bringing Kenji like, into crime? Not really, it's literally just him walking around being like, here's a sight, here's a sound, you murdered people, cool. Like, I just, I don't understand. I thought it was so just pointless as a book. It's a waste of time, in my opinion. If you're gonna read Rue Murakami, read literally anything else, because this one was so naff, I just can't comprehend it. And there we have it. Those are my childhood bookshelves. Do we feel closer? Do you think you know more about me? Do I need to maybe clear out some of my crap? Let's not answer that one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope everyone is staying safe, staying lovely, being nice to everyone around you. Um, I'm recording this video quite a bit in advance, so I don't know what the guidelines are anymore. I feel like wearing your mask is still gonna be important, so I hope you still do that. Keep washing your hands, that's always gonna be good, just for your general well-being. And I hope everyone's having a nice day. Feel free to check me out on Instagram, feel free to check me out on Twitter. I am very loud on both. Um, and I hope you guys are having a great day. I don't think I'll upload next week because while in Yorkshire I have worked on a little project, a little surprise. So hopefully I'll be posting that soon, but it's taking a little bit longer for editing because it's a big boy. Um, but hopefully a good boy. Am I talking about dogs? Am I talking about content? It's hard to tell. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. It's literally just him walking around being like, Here's the I I was gonna say here's the Eiffel Tower, Jesus Christ.